Oh boy, do I love science. But using science, we know that sex in every aspect of human sexuality is, well, it's a little complicated. And why wouldn't science be complicated? After all, science is really hard. It takes a lot for someone to do science, and I'm so excited about Bill Nye, the science guy, explaining this hard, complicated science to all of us, and gee golly whiz, I just hope he can keep it really sciencey, re really technical for me. Just listen to a few other clips from his hit Netflix show, and just judge how sciencey it is, how technical and in-depth his explanation of nature is. White people, I love you, but stop using Asian wallpaper for street cred. Ah uh, yes, the Dude White People LMAO Hypothesis. This is a scientific theory I believe was first popularized by Trevor Noah from The Daily Show. White people, am I right? <laughs> Yeah, fuck white people. This is just so scientific. I just love seeing my favorite science paraded around on channels like Comedy Central. This is just the best feeling to understand science and see that science really grow into its own as a cultural icon. It's not really about the cornrows. It's not about the Native American headdress. It's about everything that happened underneath the cornrows and the headdress for the last 500 years, right? Yeah. Well, Hearing that applause just makes me feel so good. It's so heartwarming to hear people support the science of being guilty about the things your white ancestors did. And boy, I just love all the science I get from my favorite scientists. But Bill Nye is just the best. He's the most scientific. So the average Nigerian uh, emits 0.1 metric tons of carbon annually. How many does the average American emit? I did that with my coffee this morning. Yeah, <laughs> 16 metric tons. Wow. So should we have policies that penalize people for having extra kids in the developed world? What a, <laughs> what a, what a scientific question. Should Europe have a one-child policy in order to stop climate change? Wow, now that really gets my science juices a-flowing. We should stop having children to save the environment. But wait, wouldn't that really hurt our economy if we stopped having children? I mean, Japan desperately needs multiculturalism because of their low birth rate. But the good news is that accepting multiculturalism means that your country will fill up with beautiful, third world, multicultural people. And just like Sweden, it will become a beautiful, third world, multicultural society. And that is a good thing for the environment. Science. <laughs> Save the world! Save the world! But I know what you YouTube viewers really want to watch. I know it really pulls on your heartstrings. You want to hear Bill Nye talk about sexual intercourse? That's right. You want to watch Bill Nye talk about sex. About, about coitus. God, that's so scientific. I, I feel a little science tingle when I see Bill Nye talk about this, this sexy sexy science about doing it <laughs> i used to think there were just two settings male and female but it's actually a lot sexier than that check out the smoking hot abacus of sex and who better to explain the smoking hot abacus of sex than two straight cisgender white guys and who better to talk about sex than two Cis male white guys. <laughs> Derek Moore! Oh boy, I just can't wait for all of the science that I'm about to see. I just want to know how Bill Nye is going to address brain scans showing that male and female brains are incredibly different in how they're wired, in the amount of gray matter and white matter, and other integral structural differences that are visible and scientifically measurable. As a first hypothesis, scientists thought there might be a male brain, shown here, and a female brain. But there are people who identify as both genders, or neither gender, or a combination of the two. And it turns out you can't identify the gender of a brain just by looking at it. That, that is some good science. 
People used to think that brain scans are different. In fact, a meta-analysis of studies was conducted as early as 2013 that proves a number of different areas where male and female brains are different. But that... That's a long time ago. That's not the current year of science. That isn't 2017. That was ages ago, and Bill Nye can't tell the difference. He can't see the difference between these two brains, even though male brains are statistically 8 to 11% larger than female brains. So obviously, because Bill Nye can't see the difference, there aren't any, and gender is just a feeling. Gender is whatever you wanted. Just ask this clownfish. Am I right, Clarence? The clownfish. <laughs> Here he is. No, this is relevant, everybody, because uh, you may not know, clownfish can change their sex. Yes, clownfish can change their genders, and so can humans. In fact, starfish can grow back a limb after it's been cut off, which is good news, because after watching this show, I feel a desperate need to cut my fucking arms off. But Bill, what do you say to these studies that say that transgender people have an incredibly high suicide rate? And in fact, this suicide rate is higher among transgenders who want to have surgery and hormone therapy than transgenders who are happy in their own body. What do you say to people who point out that a majority of children with gender dysphoria simply grow out of it after puberty and become gay or bisexual? I mean, in the United Kingdom, the amount of children under the age of 10 and under referred to doctors over transgender feelings has quadrupled in the last five years, and these youngsters are apparently seven times more likely to be autistic. Transgender children could actually just be normal upstanding gays, or they could just be autistic, or they could be both. But by pushing transgender politics on children, you're pushing them into an identity disorder with a lifetime suicide rate of 40%. All right, what's the big deal? For those of you out there, and I've met you, who may be concerned about people who don't seem to share your sexuality, just get over it, will you? What do you care? Those people. Bill Nye knows what he's talking about because he's asked the experts their opinion on psychology and neuroscience. Let's tell you guys, on this episode, we have the fantastic, we have the panel of, I think, the world's foremost authorities. Solomon Giorgio, you are a comedian. Dr. Jeffrey McCune, you're professor of gender and sexuality studies at Washington University in St. Louis. And then Dr. Katrina Carcasis, cultural anthropologist at Stanford University. His experts are just the best. He has a comedian, a professor of gender studies, and a cultural anthropologist who are going to talk to us about neuroscience and biology. And, and what do these, these peak experts of this field have to say about this important subject? Is there such a thing as a gay gene? No. So it used to be in Greek mythology, it was acts. But what's different now is that there's an identity that goes with the act. Homosexual people as a category of people with an identity is the new idea. It all makes sense. Gay people have existed since Greek times, but now people are choosing to take on the identity of homosexual, and we should respect their choices. Zeer's body, Zeer's choice. We are enlightened and forward-thinking people, but not everyone thinks this way. We are, of course, enlightened and forward-thinking, but not everyone sees it this way. Some people are backwards-thinking bigots who don't accept that gay people are choosing to be gay. But there are lots of flavors to sexuality. Right, why are we here, Vanilla? Damn! Oh, this again? And the best way to prove to these bigots that they're wrong is with an elaborate metaphor about sex and sexuality involving ice cream. I just think if you want to get right with the big ice cream in the sky, change your flavor by wishing to be vanilla. And that's how you know that this scientific fact is a peer-reviewed, settled science. Because there's a little zoom in to the shocked ice cream faces, and you can hear the fake audience say wow in the background. Now I've spoken to some of you about my theories on the nature of being ice cream. 
which have no basis in science. Gay people choose to be gay, according to the hard science of cultural anthropology. But we all know that gay people can't choose not to be gay because... Well, that would be fucking bigoted. It's the science of feelings. And of course, we was giant ice cream in the sky. What if the big ice cream in the sky is chocolate? Blasphemy. That's right. God is a chocolate woman, you racist. Everyone should pretend to be vanilla until they no longer have the urge not to be vanilla. But you know what's really scientific and children friendly? That's nuts. No offense, nuts. A drawn out analogy about ice cream and sexuality that ends in an orgy. Big ice cream in the sky, help me. It's good. It's like. Giddy up. Yeah. Meet you at the bowl. Woo! <laughs> Get in here, nuts. Oh, I, I can feel myself getting all sciencey. My, my pants feel a little scientific right now. I, I have a strong theory. This makes me get hard scientific. But oh no, some people have been making fan art of Bill Nye's little ice cream cartoon. This fan art doesn't make me feel scientific. This fan art isn't an endless stream of emotional and political self-validation masquerading as a search for truth. This isn't a shallow, easily digestible medium I can project my own ideology onto. You didn't have to choose this. You could have chosen to live. But that's wrong. They chose to be gay, but obviously you can't choose not to be gay. Bill, I don't feel scientific anymore. I don't feel safe and validated anymore because of this fan art. Do you have any more pieces of science to help me? Please, Bill, I, I need another hit of that science. So, you guys, seriously, this next thing I feel is very special. This is a cool little segment. Uh, you know this woman from Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Please give it up for Rachel Bloom. Yeah, now this, this is science. This is peer-reviewed. This is going to save the world. And this is something that I can get behind. <laughs> All of my bipedal mammals who identify as the feminine gender, mmm, that feels like science to me. All my options only, heart or moist, my vagina has its own voice. Are my options only hard or moist, my vagina has its own voice. You know, I love this metaphor. In fact, I love it better when she has to explain that metaphor for me. Not vocal cords, a metaphorical voice. And I love it even more as she has to explain a joke about explaining the metaphor. Sometimes I do a voice for my vagina. Please don't tell me I'm the only one who does that. Cause my sex junk is so oh 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 much more than either oh 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 power bottom or a top off versatile of may have some butt stuff who enjoys a flashlight in the cold moonlight with a sad clown skyping via satellite damn skippy home slice damn skippy home slice now i i think that's enough science for me today Seeing Bill Nye behind a mixer trying to DJ his way into saving the world has taught me a lesson about science. It's taught me that science can be whatever you want it to be. Science is just a word that you use to push whatever ideas you have as the only correct ideas without addressing real arguments. Science is really about emotional and political self-validation, and science is all for the children. It's like... Meet you at the bowl. This, this is, is on. on. Oh, yes. Like, <laughs> yeah, get it. Woo. <laughs> get in here, nuts. If you love science as much as I do, you'll check out this t-shirt and consider buying it to support this channel. Links to this and more in the description.